Hi, my name is Dr. Harry Witchell, and this is a screencast showing you how to do rapid interpretation of arterial blood gases. So this is an introductory explanation, and it's not meant to be used in the hospital, but it will explain to you how to make rapid interpretation of arterial blood gases when you are in an exam situation. So there are several caveats about this. First of all, this is not the only way to interpret arterial blood gas values. In fact, this is not even the best way to interpret arterial blood gas values because with this method, you do not think about symptoms, which is definitely wrong from a clinical perspective. However, this method is the fastest method for interpreting arterial blood gas values if you are in an examination situation. So let's look at example one. Here's a patient who has a pH of 7.31 a PCO2 in their arterial blood of 8 kilopascals, a PO2 of 10 kilopascals, and a base excess of plus 3.0. Here are the five steps for rapidly interpreting arterial blood gas values. The first and unequivocally the most important step for you is to label each line for acid, base, or neutral. Step two is to determine whether there is or is not compensation. Step three is to decide between full or partial compensation. Step four is to decide between acidosis and alkalosis. And step five is finally to decide between respiratory, metabolic, or combined. So now you've seen the overview of the five steps. Let's look at them in detail with this particular example. Step one, label each line for acid, base, or neutral. When you look at the CO2, High CO2 is acid because it drives the carbonic anhydrase reaction. By contrast, high base excess is alkalotic or base. Now, it may seem slightly counterintuitive, but negative base excess means that it's acidic. pH below 7.35 is acidotic and above 7.45 is base. For the didactic purposes of this screencast, oxygen does not have any direct effects and we won't really be considering them although they're really crucial, obviously, for your patient. Now, if everything is neutral, you are done. But all three of the following have to be neutral. The pH, the CO2, and the base excess. If all three are in the normal or neutral range, your patient's arterial blood gases are normal. However, if either the CO2 or the base excess are not normal, your patient's arterial blood gases are not normal, even if the pH is normal. So you have to complete this process. Now, Here's a little question for you. Given this patient, would you say the effects of CO2 are 1, acid, 2, base, 3, neutral, or 4, you can't tell from the given information? Take, take a few seconds to decide. So why don't you stop the tape and decide which one of these that it is. Make a commitment. Right, welcome back. Well, here the PCO2 is at 8 kilopascals. The normal range for PCO2 is 4.7 to 6 kilopascals. So this PCO2 is high, and high PCO2s are acid driving. That is, they have effects that are acidic. Let's go through this in more detail now. First, you're going to see that for this tape, we're going to have four lines at the bottom of the screen. And these four lines are a good way of understanding how to derive what you have to say about arterial blood gases. The interpretation effectively involves four separate decisions. So step one is to figure out or to label what the pH, the PCO2, the PO2, and the base excess are. So what we see right away is that the PCO2 is acid, as we discussed, because the PCO2 is 8 kilopascals, and it is above the normal range for PCO2, which is 4.7 to 6. We also see that the base excess is outside the normal range. Plus 3.0 means the base excess is base, because the normal range for base excess is minus 2 to plus 2. 3.0 is above the normal range, and that means for base excess that it's creating base. The pH itself is acidic because it's 7.31, which is outside the normal range. It's below 7.35. And here, the PO2 is below the normal range, but oxygen is considered neutral, and therefore it has no effects. Step two is to determine whether there is or is not compensation. So here, we have to compare the effects of the CO2 to the base excess. 
If the effects of CO2 and base excess are opposite, we're going to write down the word compensated. But if one of them is neutral, they are not compensated. If there is no compensation, we're going to write down either uncompensated or acute. So here we look back at our patient, and we can see when we look at the CO2 effects, they're acidic, and we look at the base excess effects, and they're base. That means that these, these effects are opposite, which means that there is indeed compensation. So we see that this is compensated. Step three is to decide between full or partial compensation. If there is no compensation, which we would have determined in the previous step, write down uncompensated and then skip to the next step. Otherwise, here you have to check whether the pH is in the normal range. If the pH is in the normal range, write down the word fully. If the pH is outside the normal range, write down the word partially, as in fully compensated and partially compensated. So here we look, we already know that this patient is at least compensated, and we look at the pH and it's in the acidic range, therefore it is not in the normal range. If it's not in the normal range, it cannot be fully compensated, therefore it is partially compensated. So this patient is partially compensated. Next step is to decide between acidosis and alkalosis. If the pH is in the normal range and both CO2 and base excess are normal, the arterial blood gases are normal. Otherwise, if the pH is below 7.40, write down acidosis. If the pH is above 7.40, write down alkalosis. The pH should never be exactly 7.40 if the body is in a pathological, that is, in a non-normal state. So here we look at whether the pH is above or below 7.4, and we see that the pH is 7.31. That means that this patient is acidotic because the pH is below 7.4. Our next step is to decide between whether it's respiratory, metabolic, or combined. So we're going to match the acidosis alkalosis that we determined from the previous step to the effects of CO2 or base excess. So that is, we're going to match step four to step one. If the CO2 effects are the same as the acidosis or alkalosis, that is the final of the four lines, then you can write down respiratory. So for example, if you have alkalosis and the CO2 effects are alkalotic, while the base excess is either neutral or acidic, then the effects are respiratory. If, however, the base excess effects are the same as the acidosis or alkalosis, then you can write down metabolic. If both the CO2 effects and the base excess effects are the same as the acidosis and alkalosis, then the cause is combined. So going back to this example, we remember that this patient is acidotic. So we now look to see whether the CO2 or the base excess matches this acidosis. Here we see that the CO2 matches the acidosis. Therefore, this patient has acidosis derived from lung effects. So this is respiratory acidosis. Notice also that the base excess is in the basic range. It's alkalotic. This goes back to the steps we determined previously where we determined that it was partially compensated. So the final answer is this patient is partially compensated with respiratory acidosis. What does that mean? Well, partially compensated respiratory acidosis means that the lungs are causing acidosis. They're not eliminating enough CO2 which probably implies that there's low gas exchange rate. and probably also means, because the gas exchange rate is low, that the O2 levels are low. Partially compensated means that the kidneys are attempting to compensate. That means that there has been time for compensation, and that suggests that this condition is probably chronic. Now, there are many different things that can cause partially compensated respiratory acidosis, but an obvious example might be COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease.